Hello and welcome to another lesson. This I believe is the final lesson of the third domain. And in this video, of course, we're gonna be talking about physical security. So the thing to keep in mind with physical security is that human safety is number one. That's a common theme in the ISC squared common body of knowledge. And the thing that you need to consider, and I don't know if I wrote this correctly, I think this is how it was worded in one of the books. Physical security is inversely proportional or inversely related to the IT security or the um, the technical controls that you would put in place. So in, for example, if you increase your level of physical security, you are possibly able to reduce the level of security for uh, technical controls. To illustrate here, let's say you have a castle or you, you have some immense level of physical security here where you host your systems. You are able to, I should say, consider some less or some lesser technical controls for your systems. So maybe maybe you only wanna have one biometric or maybe you only wanna have employees wear their badges and the, uh, the systems are all open, completely open with no authentication and so forth. On the other hand, if you have your systems out in a public park that are freely available to everyone to touch and try to get into, you're gonna to wanna to have some more controls. For example, you're going to want to encrypt the device. You're going to want to put some kind of biometric on there. You're going to want to have employees not only just wear their badge, but maybe it's also a smart card that they will have to insert into the machine in order to access it. So you're going to want to increase your level of technical controls there. Fire suppression is one of those things that if you don't work with it on a daily basis, it's a little confusing. And luckily they took a lot of the stuff out that was previously in the common body of knowledge. They did keep a few concepts, however. Luckily you don't need to know the fire types and all of that, but what they do have is uh, things like the wet pipe. So wet pipe is when the water is there, it's ready to go. And there's of course chance or risk of leaks and flooding and things like that. And then you have dry pipes, which is the, the gas that's in the pipe. So with the wet pipe, you have the heat sensors and they these heads operate independently. Dry pipe is a little bit better depending on your needs, of course, because it's pre-filled with gas. And then you have something called a deluge where all the heads activate at once. And these are good for things like hangers or parking lots or um, large power plants. And then you have something called a pre-action, which is a type of a dry pipe. And that's where you have compressed air in the pipes. And once they activate, then it becomes a wet pipe at that point. Kind of strange that they would call it something else. But anyway, then you have things that are gas-based, things like inert gas, argonite, energen. And then you have hydrofluorocarbon, FM200, and halon. And hal I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. Halon depletes the ozone layer, so that's been outlawed in some places. And then you have arrow K, and I believe all of these are safe in the space where humans would be working. So one thing to remember is that a lot of these concepts in the physical security part are very, very easy, very, very common sensey. Some of these additional considerations you may not have heard of, such as how the conductivity is affected by things like the humidity levels, they're basically going to contribute to the conductivity. So if you have a bunch of open wires or if you just have a lot of electronics in general, you wanna have good humidity control, something that prevents condensation. And then you also wanna consider that you don't want it too dry in there because if things are too dry, then you're gonna have something like static electricity. So you wanna be able to control that humidity level. We also have things like Faraday cages. I'm sure most of you are aware of this, but this is, this is really just a giant metal box that prevents electromagnetic signals from coming in or going out. You have things like white noise machines that can basically prevent any eavesdroppers or people with microphones trying to listen into what you're doing inside of a building. Then you have things to consider like visibility. Where is your data? Is your data displayed on a screen that's facing a window that's pointing to the street or uh, can the public basically see inside? Does the public have visibility into your systems and your operations? And you want to think consider you want to consider things like power supply as well, uninterruptible power supplies and power generators and things like that. Once again, thanks for watching. Head over to cissprep.net where we have 1200 practice questions some of the most difficult on the market and some of the most accurate in terms of reflecting the style of the CISSP exam. Thanks again to everyone who has supported the website. As many of you know, 
And as I mentioned in my last video, that this is something that we do in our spare time. And it's something that we do because we feel that a lot of the tools that are currently on the market don't prepare people for this exam. It's extremely difficult and it is, it is a nerve wracking experience. And so we feel that having appropriate and accurate practice questions is essential in preparing people for this exam. So once again, thanks for your support and we'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks and have a great day.